tea harvesters basically present a source of impedance to the uh, load circuit and uh, the power output is maximized when the load impedance is matched to the source impedance that is we, we have also uh, learned in which you call maximum power transfer theorem okay uh, so the internal load if it is matching with the external load and then uh, there will be a possibility of maximum power to transfer okay so therefore uh, it is very common practice to vary the load to find out the maximum power okay so we will try to find out the uh, maximum power uh, maximum power uh, as a function and for a particular value of load register that is what we are going to find out okay. now suppose if you have a harmonic excitation so if your mechanical excitation if your uh, the mechanical excitation or you can say the mechanical stimulation if this mechanical stimulation is harmonic then the internal impedance and therefore the whatever the optimum uh, load which will be matched and the power output these are all will be frequency dependent so in this case the internal uh, impedance if i just say ri and uh, rl okay all and the maximum power and the maximum power this all will be frequency dependent this all will be frequency dependent they all will be frequency dependent but for a non sinusoidal excitation or response the situation though will be a little more complex there we have to take the time average of the uh, power which is be which will be delivered to the load and that uh, uh, can be written as p that is equals to 1 by tau 0 to tau v into i into time dt okay here uh, this tau is what is the time period which is time period is the time period for a resistive load the current i and voltage are in phase but most practical loads are non resistive and they generally much more complex okay and uh, because uh, there will be some uh, non linear elements such as diodes there will be transistors as a load which we use right batteries okay as well as reactive components such as capacitor okay, for energy storage and inductors these are so that's why uh, the uh, load which we are talking about uh, they will be little more complex and they will be non register basically okay there will be comp uh, two type of component which are non-linear uh, component and uh, such as uh, diode transistor batteries as well as reactive component so uh, in our case uh, the load which we will be talking about the electrical load the electrical uh, load okay uh, if it is most cases most cases it is uh, not a register okay this will be not a register only uh, as a simple case 
uh, but it will be a nonlinear element so uh, it will be a some nonlinear component what are those for example diodes and uh, we may have a transistor we may have uh, uh, batteries okay uh, as well as uh, along with we may have uh, some reactive components we may have some reactive component as our electrical load in the circuit which uh, will be capacitor if you are talking about an energy storage then uh, there will be a capacitor there may be some inductors also so this will act as a nonlinear uh, i mean uh, electrical load in our case okay so our electrical load will be like uh, all these components so you know if you have a simple uh, simple register then uh, in this case your voltage and current will be in phase but if you have uh, this nonlinear and reactive components then uh, they will not be uh, same okay and they, the phase of the current and voltage which you are measuring they will not be in same phase correct so finally our conclusion is that it is important to consider the implication of time averaging of the measured output so you have to what you have to do that the power which will be measured so uh, this time time averaging of uh, power this uh, need to be done time averaging of the power need to be done now a piezoelectric energy harvester produces a charge which is proportional to stress or strain uh, and uh, if you remember we have uh, done this before but still let me just give you those equation because that will be helpful for us so here i can just write down that here let me just write down those uh, as d equals to dt plus epsilon t E, this is one of the equation and another uh, equation let me write down as e into s plus epsilon trace constant okay so here uh, let me just uh, tell you what is the this t stands for so t is the stress okay uh, s is the train okay d is the electric displacement or uh, which is basically measure the charge per unit area right so this is the displacement what is displacement charge per unit area that mostly which measures this thing charge and what is e e is the electric field electric 
field okay and what is small d therefore small d is the, your uh, piezoelectric uh, piezoelectric charge uh, in fact d e and d both are basically let me just uh, for the time being let me they are piezoelectric constant they are piezoelectric constant one is piezoelectric charge constant one is piezoelectric volt voltage constant so this is piezo coefficient both are piezoelectric coefficient okay what else uh, epsilon epsilon is uh, now this epsilon uh, uh, epsilon this epsilon and that if if i have this t over there then it is trace is constant if uh, s is in the subscript then it is uh, strain is constant so this is basically the permittivity okay or the dielectric constant this is permittivity okay or the dielectric constant at this this all these uh, fields or the coefficients are generally in general expressed as vector or these tensor quantities okay but for ease of the explanation the tensor notation is omitted okay we are not uh, talking about that so for a uh, now we are talking about a device which is uh, subject to the measurement so and uh, obviously its structure will be a little complex for a complex device such as a cantilever uh, the stress and strain vary within the device so the charge is uh, integrated over the piezoelectric element okay and uh, the current is the obviously it will be the time derivative of the displacement uh, field displacement uh, just uh, q by a uh, so at constant electric field so if i uh, let me just uh, take two condition one let me just uh, take the first condition i am saying that electric field is constant let me take electric field as constant electric field and i am uh, finding the value of i so i will be d d by dt time derivative of the charge per unit area so this can be written as now from this equation you can just get uh, now from this equation you you will uh, get the value of here you can see that uh, here here uh, if electric field is constant so this term will give you this term will give you uh, zero so second term need not to be considered so uh, d d d d d t of uh, d of d of uh, this equation if i take the time derivative of this equation so d that is a constant so this will come out okay so that d will come out and then i can just write down d t by d t small t by capital t by small t okay that uh, can be written as like this way and uh, if i use this equation to write down so if i now if i consider uh, again uh, electric field is constant so second term will not be contributing anything and now if i just write down for for this equation this will be uh, as this will be e into ds by dt 
okay this shows that the short circuit current short circuit current means uh, if electric field is uh, zero okay because then there will be no potential difference if you are uh, uh, short circuit make a short circuit so that will depends on the rate of strain of the piezoelectric element okay here i said that uh, ds is the strain okay so a fast impulse of excitation can therefore generate an uh, arbitrarily large current or voltage okay and uh, the instantaneous power generated can be uh, quite high okay so here you can see that uh, as the current is depends on the rate of strain how the strain is changing in the uh, within the piezoelectric element uh, a large current or voltage whatever this can be uh, uh, generated uh, i mean arbitrarily very large value and therefore the instantaneous power instantaneous power means this uh, power which is time dependent okay time dependent power power at any instant that could be quite high okay so for a high strain rate the yield stress of the material will be reached in very short time so achieving a high instantaneous power from an impulsive mechanical input does not imply that that this power level can be sustained over a period of time because uh, suddenly if you are applying a strain so rate change of uh, the strain is very high so your instantaneous power so if so that this this is telling me that the the instantaneous instantaneous power uh, could be very high but that does not mean that that the device is actually giving that very high power for a longer period of time okay fine so uh, he, so it means that here you can see that as the current here you can see it depends on the rate how rate at which stress or strain whatever i mean um, you can uh, talk about anything uh, whether stress is changed or the strain which, which is produced that is giving you a, in a very high uh, if this rate of change of stress is a uh, strain is very high though you are getting a very high current or voltage whatever and here uh, uh, we are talking about short circuit uh, thing uh, here we are talking about short circuit thing so that's why we are talking about current right and this is short circuit current basically and this is what your short circuit current so uh, that is actually giving you a very instantaneous very high power okay uh, but that power uh, will not be sustained over a period of time okay that is a practical thing okay so this is one of the reason for which you can uh, now understand that the time average of the time averaging of the power is very much important time averaging of the power is very much important okay now let's uh, uh, see that uh, a piezoelectric transducers converts mechanical to electrical energy and uh, that energy which uh, how much mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy with respect to the 
input energy mechanical energy basically that that is given by a term which we call coupling factor which you call coupling factor so here we are talking about a coupling factor so coupling sorry coupling coupling factor k so what is this k this is also another quite important parameter this k uh, and uh, in fact this k square is given by the energy okay the propo uh, the mechanical energy which is converted to electrical energy so basically this is the converted electrical energy uh, divided by which is basically the output okay which is basically the output and uh, the mechanical energy which so that is the electrical energy which is converted and mechanical energy which and now this is the This is what is supplied okay this is your input that quantity is called uh, the coupling factor k stands for that so again subject to the constant such as yield and mechanical and electrical non-linearities arbitrarily large electrical output could be achieved if the input power is unlimited in practice the power available from the mechanical source is finite it cannot be infinite so in assessing the ability of energy harvester to deliver a useful energy to a device such as wireless sensor it is necessary to take into account the ability of the mechanical system to deliver power into the transducer and therefore the mechanical properties of the input used for testing should be measured and it also be discussed so here we are talking about the importance of importance of of the mechanical input Okay, we here we are talking about the importance of the mechanical input. Okay, so what we said, let me just repeat what I am trying to say here, that uh, k square is dip, uh, is what it is k square is the basically output by the input. Uh, your input is the mechanical energy, and output is the converted uh, mechanical energy, which is converted into this. So basically this is the fraction k square is talking about the fraction of the mechanical energy which is converted into the electrical energy and so on so as we also know the mechanical source from which we are scavenging the power it has a finite value it is not in finite value so the mechanical input which you are given is not infinite right so in assessing the ability of an energy harvester to deliver a useful energy to a device for working okay any device it is necessary to take into account the ability of the mechanical system itself to deliver the 
power into the transducer and therefore mechanical properties of the input also need to be considered okay many applications are not based on the internal coupling for example power from human motion can employ direct strain coupling okay because because there you cannot characterize the human motion right but the same principle apply that is power density need to be assessed in relation to the ability of the mechanical cells source to create strain in the piezoelectric machine okay so like i said that uh, now if we are talking about if we are focusing on the mechanical excitation so basically what kind of mechanical excitation basically what kind of uh, mechanical excitation you are considering now for example if i am uh, harvesting energy from human motion so here power density need to be calculated power density need to be calculated uh, in relation to the ability of the mechanical source to create strain in the piezoelectric material okay now for an impulsive type of excitation the strain pulse induces a finite charge or energy per pulses suppose if i have a very uh, mechanical excitation it's not uh, random because in this case mechanical excitation if i am talking about human uh, motion for example then uh, you know that mechanical excitation is very a completely random kind of thing is a kind of completely random kind of thing but suppose if i am talking about a mechanical excitation which is uh, a kind of impulse okay impulsive type of uh, it is giving you a pulse impulsive okay then uh, whatever the strain uh, that will also be produced and the energy uh, so there will be energy which will be produced in this case energy per pulse energy per pulse will be counted will be measured for an ideal piezoelectric element the charge released for a given amount of strain does not depend on the rate the energy per pulse can therefore be quantified but average power delivery into the load depends on the pulse repetition rate in some material charge transport processes or leakage currents can reduce this reduce the charge delivered to the load in which case the measured energy per cycle will be rate dependent so it means how this pulse is repeating so okay you can if you have a so here you have an impulsive excitation so here let me Say that we have an impulsive excitation impulsive uh, uh, excitation and so in this case uh, you are measuring energy per pulse but for an ideal piezoelectric element the charge released for a given amount of strain that does not depend on the rate the energy per pulse can therefore be quantified but average power delivery into the load depends on the pulse repetition rate that is quite important the pulse repetition rate is important so in some material charge transport process or the leakage currents can reduce the charge delivery because if suppose the pulse repetition rate is very slow in that case the 
charge transport process or the leakage current itself can uh, uh, reduce this charge okay and in the, in this case in this case the measured energy per cycle uh, will be rate dependent the how what is the uh, pulse repetition rate that will be uh, that will be a deciding factor uh, that whether what will be the uh, ultimately uh, power you are getting you are gaining okay and uh, recently alternative device design to ceramic or polymer piezoelectrics have been demonstrated that use nano to micro sized crystals of piezoelectric materials deposited or grown across a substrate material when deposited onto flexible substrate these have a have the potential to access both the advantage of a flexible piezoelectric such as pvdf of ceramic polymer composites with the high coupling of single crystal piezoelectric okay now in these devices by vibrating or compressing the structure in the case of uh, a rigid substrate or let's say bending when using a flexible substrate the piezoelectric elements are strained and an external voltage will be generated so by vibrating or by applying some pressure on this uh, substrate or bending the structure that uh, external voltage can be generated in designs that use flexible substrate the whole device can be bent or enable the harvesting of energy so basically uh, if i just uh, take it like this like so for example if if it is uh, suppose this is the your film okay and so and uh, you have a electrode over here so deposit a uh, deposited uh, film and then this will be the electrode and uh, this will go like this way okay this will go like this now if you bent the whole thing or whatever okay whatever the excitation you put. and maybe you have a cantilever beam also so this will generate and here uh, we will see later we have to have uh, a rectifier circuit we will have to have a rectifier circuit over here okay and uh, then uh, this rectifier circuit will uh, uh, change the dc uh, the ac which we have seen that ac to dc and uh, then this okay this will be the basically the output and this output will be measured across a load resistance there a load resistance will be used and uh, here you can use a capacitor to store that charge okay that 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 is the uh, so this is your rectifier this is your rectifier circuit okay and this is your load resistance this kind of arrangement is generally done and this is your capacitor so you measure the output voltage across this okay and uh, this is what is your this is what is your the piezoelectric element okay so such uh, i mean uh, as i said that in uh, this kind of designs uh, for where you can use a flexible substrate the whole device can be bent which uh, enable the harvesters to scavenge or harvest energy from wide range of sources including low frequency 
uh, but high displacement movements such as such uh, which is found in case of everyday human motion also so in that kind of design this uh, the human motion which is basically uh, we consider the human motion human motion which which you consider as a low frequency excitation it is considered as a low frequency low frequency excitation human motion is a low frequency excitation okay now such new device design present a new range of challenges for testing and uh, reporting there how you are going to report uh, the performance of it that will be a challenging there so output from these devices has been reported in variety of ways you know uh, most commonly the open circuit voltage and in terms of short circuit current or sometimes uh, short circuit uh, current density so mostly in this case the open circuit uh, voc or uh, sometimes the short circuit current or maybe current density is reported versus time okay. because now everything is in uh, respect to time need to measure okay so output from these devices uh, in terms of uh, open circuit voltage or short circuit current or current density versus time versus time as an impulsive strain is induced in the device sometimes the peak values are also used to calculate so sometimes the power peak value peak value of the power how how you are going to calculate so the peak value of the voc okay and uh, the short circuit current the peak value of the short circuit current peak value of the short circuit current that is also sometimes used to calculate the peak power so this is basically the peak power you are calculating here okay right or this power peak power per unit per unit area or volume so sometimes the peak value of the power which is calculated the peak value of the voc and the peak value of the short circuit current per unit area or volume that has been calculated now to date this these have provided some useful means to compare the relative output of the devices within this area of research however in recent years the output of such devices has increased rapidly from uh, you know millivolt to range of voltage so the uh, whatever the uh, quantity you are measuring let's say this voltage value voc value uh, because your device is now improving so that has change to millivolt to volt this makes this increasingly necessary to be able to compare the performance of these devices with alternative energy harvester designs and to assess their stability okay and also the suitability for integration into other electronic components such as batteries or capacitors or sensors okay now it need to be compared because suppose if i have a device uh, 
uh, which is giving the well uh, VOC in uh, millivolt and uh, you are preparing a device which is giving the voltage in terms of the volt but there has to be a comparison that which one is the best one okay so therefore it 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 is very necessary uh, to measure this whatever the power or this thing in terms of area or volume so power per unit area or volume that need to be measured that is giving you the comparison that which device is okay maybe sometimes uh, the voltage which is giving in the millivolt its area is very small that's why you are getting a millivolt uh, range of so that's why the power or power density so this is what your power density power density need to be measured okay 